For years, scientists have convinced us that the universe is constantly expanding. This belief has fascinated scientists and academics who have adopted the Big Bang Theory as the most widely accepted explanation for the origin and evolution of the universe. According to this theory, the universe began in an extremely dense and hot state, and has since undergone continuous expansion. However, the James Watt Space Telescope has made a surprising discovery that challenges this theory. How did the Space Telescope challenge the idea of expansion and what does this mean for our understanding of space? Join us as we take a look at the recent shocking find from the legendary James Webb Telescope. If you're interested in keeping up to date with news from the universe and its surroundings, subscribe to our channel. Be sure to like this video and turn on the notification bell. Albert Einstein's general theory of relativity provides a framework for understanding how the presence of heavy objects bends space-time. According to this theory, the cosmos originated as a singularity a point of infinite density and temperatures approximately 13.8 billion years ago. According to the Big Bang Theory, all matter and energy were found compressed into an extremely small, hot region. At this point, the cosmos began to expand with a rapid and violent event known as the Big Bang. During the first few seconds following the Big Bang, the singularity experienced a massive release of energy. The universe was filled with an extremely hot, dense, and energetic plasma containing protons, neutrons, electrons, and their antiparticles. As the universe cooled due to its expansion, the temperature dropped enough to allow the electrons to bond with protons and form neutral atoms. This process, known as recombination, allowed protons to move freely through space, resulting in the cosmic microwave background radiation that we can detect today. The stretching of space and time itself may represent the expansion of the universe. This stretching does not imply a movement through a space where objects move away from central point, but an expansion of space itself. We can imagine as the surface of an inflating balloon. The points on the surface move away from each other as the balloon grows, not because the points are moving, but because the space between them is expanding. Similarly, in the case of the universe, galaxies and other celestial objects are pulled by the expansion of space rather than away from it. So, what is the source of this expansion of space-time according to scientists? Dark energy is a hypothetical form of energy that is thought to permeate all of space and exert a negative pressure. This dark energy is thought to be the case for the accelerating expansion of the universe. In recent decades, observations have revealed a phenomenon crucial to understanding the importance of dark energy, the balance between gravitational forces and the expansion of the universe. Gravity, an attractive force acting on massive objects, tries to slow down the growth of the universe. If the universe were composed solely of matter, such as galaxies and their corresponding mass, Gravity would eventually stop the expansion and give rise to a phenomenon known as the Big Crunch. However, observations reveal that the expansion of the cosmos is accelerating rather than slowing down. This implies the existence of a repulsive force that counteracts the effects of gravity. This repulsive force is generated by dark energy, which is uniformly distributed in space and exerts a negative pressure. This precise nature of the energy remains one of the greatest mysteries in modern cosmology, and scientists are actively investigating its characteristics. Although dark energy is responsible for the accelerating expansion, the distribution of matter in the universe also plays a crucial role. The density of matter and energy influences the curvature of space-time through the equations of general relativity. Regions with a higher density exert a stronger gravitational pull, which slow down the expansion of the cosmos. On the other hand, regions with lower density experience a weaker gravitational attraction and contribute to the overall expansion of the universe. Matter in the universe is not uniformly distributed, but is organized into massive cosmic formations such as galaxies, clusters, and superclusters, which are interconnected by vast cosmic red-shaped filaments. These structures form 
due to the gravitational collapse of the regions with higher density under the influence of gravity. As the universe expands, these cosmic formations experience a stretching of space-time. However, gravitational forces within these structures counteract the expansion to some extent, resulting in a complex interaction between the expansion of space-time and the gravitational pull of mass. On larger scales, the expansion takes precedence, resulting in a continuous stretching of the cosmic web. It is important to note that the expansion of the universe does not imply that galaxies are moving away in space. In fact, galaxies may move closer together on smaller scales due to the influence of gravity. However, on a larger scale, the overall effect of the expansion is to increase the distances between galaxies over time. Various observations and abundant evidence for the expansion of the universe. One important example is the redshift of light emitted by distant galaxies. As the universe expands, the wavelengths of light from these galaxies are stretched, shifting towards the red end of the electromagnetic spectrum. This phenomenon, known as the cosmological redshift, provides compelling evidence for the expansion of space-time. Another important piece of evidence is the cosmic microwave background radiation, or CMB, which is a remnant of the hot early universe. The CMB shows a surprisingly uniform distribution of energy across the sky, with small oscillations that reveal important information about the initial conditions and subsequent evolution of the universe. Extensive CMB investigations have confirmed predictions of an expanding universe and strengthened the Big Bang theory. Observational data from large-scale surveys such as the Sloan Digital Sounding and the European Space Agency's Planck Satellite Project have provided accurate information in recent years about the expansion rate of the universe and the distribution of matter and energy within it. These discoveries have improved our understanding and contributed to the ongoing research for information about the underlying nature of the universe. One of the most fascinating aspects of the James Webb Space Telescope's galaxy surveys is its ability to map the large-scale structure of the cosmos at high redshifts, when galaxies were still young and grouped into large clusters known as protoclusters. These protoclusters are the predecessors of today's galaxy clusters, which are the largest gravitational structures in the universe. By studying these protoclusters, we can learn about the interactions between galaxies, their interactions with their surroundings, their growth and merger, and how they influence the formation of stars and planets. Protoclusters are extremely rare and difficult to find because of their wide expanse in the sky and low surface luminosity. However, the James Webb Space Telescope's wide field, high sensitivity cameras will make it possible to detect hundreds of miles of galaxies in a single observation, covering a significant portion of the sky with unprecedented depth and detail that has never been observed before. Astronomers have the ability to identify protoclusters by analyzing galaxy density, spectral properties, and facial dispersions. To do this, they combine data from the James Webb Space Telescope with other observatory surveys. The James Webb also provide information on the masses, ages, star formation rate, dust content, and gas kinematics of individual galaxies within protoclusters. These observations will reveal the differences between galaxies within protoclusters and those in less dense environments, as well as their evolution over time within their hot structures. In addition, the GW will allow it to investigate the intergalactic median, or IGM, around protoclusters, which is enriched by supernovae and active galactic nuclei, AGN. The IGM regulates galaxy formation by supplying gas for star formation and withdrawing it through winds and outflows. However, images captured by the James Webb Space Telescope are challenging the Big Bang theory as they show galaxies of enormous sizes that appear not to have been able to exist or are not consistent with the Big Bang theory. 
These candidates' galaxies are estimated to have formed approximately 13 billion years ago, between 500 and 700 million years after the Big Bang. Astronomers have the expectation of observing young, small galaxies in this region of early space. However, images captured by the space telescope reveal that the stellar systems may contain about the same number of stars as our own Milky Way galaxy. Instead of finding tiny young galaxies discovering mature galaxies similar to our own in what was thought to be the dawn of the universe. The James Webb Space Telescope is equipped with infrared sensors capable of detecting light emitted by older stars and galaxies. This allows astronomers to go back in time almost 13.5 billion years to the beginning of the known universe. Prior to the discovery, scientists had detected numerous galaxies in the oldest regions of the universe approximately 350 million years after the Big Bang using data collected by the JW. These distant stellar systems were small and in agreement with the predictions of current cosmological models. However, the recent discovery of six mature massive galaxies in the same region of the early universe raises the possibility of challenging current cosmological theory and modifying what has long been considered an accepted scientific knowledge. It is surprising to think that the early universe could have organized itself so quickly since these galaxies did not form at that time. These new discoveries emerged from proving a region near the constellation Ursa Major, which was first observed by the Hubble telescope in the 1990s. The candidate galaxies are so striking that they contradict 99% of current cosmological predictions. According to current calculations, there should not be enough material to form large stellar systems 500 to 700 million years after the Big Bang. The researchers believe that, to explain the observed mass of these galaxies, it would be necessary to either modify current cosmological models or revise our scientific understanding of how galaxies arose in the early cosmos. Both hypotheses required fundamental change in our understanding of the early formation of galaxies in the universe. These unexpected objects have been humorously dubbed universe breakers and have so far lived up to their name. Although more data are needed to confirm that these candidate galaxies are as large and old as they appear, the data suggests that they are very likely to be real galaxies. There is the possibility that some of these objects are obscured supermassive black holes, which is another interesting aspect to consider. However, the amount of mass discovered implies that the known mass of stars at this stage of the universe is up to 100 times larger than previously thought. Although the sample is halt, it is still a remarkable difference. It is possible that these objects are not galaxies at all. Another possibility is that they are other kinds of strange objects, such as faint quasars, which would be quite interesting. Even if only one of these galaxies turned out to be real, it would have a test of all the high turtle known limits of our cosmological understanding. In the meantime, premilitary observations offer persuasive insight into how the JW could ultimately rewrite our understanding of the universe. The rapid pace of discoveries made by the JW is similar to the early days of the Hubble telescope, which was launched into low Earth orbit in 1990. The Hubble Space Telescope quickly began to provide a much more complex picture of the early universe than researchers had initially anticipated. Scientists have made a new discovery that challenges the idea that the universe is expanding at the same rate in all directions. This finding casts doubt on the widely accepted theory that the expansion rate is uniform in all directions. A recent study, based on the data from the European Space Agency's Newton survey, NASA's Chandra, and the German-led Rosat X-ray observatories, revealed that this cosmological premise may be wrong. A PhD researcher in astronomy and astrophysics at Bond University together with his supervisor, set out to investigate the theory of isotropy. According to this theory, the universe has the same properties in all directions on large scales. 
with small deviations widely accepted as a consequence of established fundamental physics. This premise has been supported by observations of the cosmic microwave background CMB, which is a direct remnant of the Big Bang and reflects the universe in its early stages, only 380,000 years old. The uniform distribution of the CMB across the sky implies that the universe expanded rapidly and uniformly in all directions in those early times. However, in today's universe, this could not be true. The researchers studied the behavior of more than 800 galaxy clusters in the present-day universe in collaboration with colleagues from the University of Bonn and Harvard University. If the isotropy hypothesis were correct, the clusters should have uniform properties across the sky. However, they observed significant differences. They compared data from X-ray temperature readings of the extremely hot gas found in the clusters with the bright appearance of the clusters on the sky. One would expect clusters with the same temperatures and the same distance to appear equally bright, but this is not what we found. They found that the clusters with similar properties and temperatures appeared less bright than expected in one direction of the sky and brighter than expected in another direction. These differences were quite significant, hovering around 30% variation. Moreover, these variations were not random, but followed a distinctive pattern depending on the direction in which you looked at the sky. Our universe is constantly expanding, making it difficult to establish its limits and measure its size. However, thanks to the James Webb Telescope, we can now glimpse into the farthest corners of the universe. Since the James Webb Telescope began its exploration, numerous scientists such as Brian Cox have made announcements revealing the true size and vastness of the universe, which is almost unimaginable. Within the fragment of the universe that we can observe, there are approximately 2 trillion galaxies. This estimate is based on the studies of the local universe. We are quite sure that this portion that we can see is only a small part of what could be an infinite universe that we do not yet know. We are not separate from the universe, but are an integral part of it. We are in a way in which the universe notes itself. With the help of the James Webb Telescope, we plunge into a vast exploration to discover the true size of our universe. If you are interested in keeping up to date with news about the universe and its surroundings, subscribe to our channel, be sure to like this video, and turn on the notification bell. If we were traveling at a speed of 70 miles per hour, it would take us about 15 days to complete one lap around the Earth's equator. It would take approximately 5 months to reach the Moon, 63 years to reach Mars at its closest point, and a staggering 4,400 years to reach Neptune. These figures alone demonstrate the immense scale of our solar system. To put this in context, we consider the Voyager 1 proof launched in 1977. At a speed of 38,000 miles per hour, it did not leave their solar system until 2012. This means it spent 35 years just to get out of our solar system. Even light, which can circle the Earth 7 times in a single second, seems relatively slow compared to the vastness of our solar system. And although our solar system is vast, it is dwarfed by the enormity of the Milky Way galaxy. This galaxy contains approximately 300 billion stars, each of which probably has its own planetary systems. Our nearest neighboring star, Alpha Centauri, is 4.3 light years away, which means that if we were to travel at the speed of light, it would take us 4.3 years to get there. Now, imagine the time it would take to travel to the next star system, Alpha Centauri, even if something were traveling at the same speed as the Voyager proof, that is, 38,000 miles per hour, it would take a staggering 70,000 years to reach Alpha Centauri. This shows us the immensity of the distances involved in exploring the cosmos. Let us now focus on Volta Rouge, a star located 640 light years away. If we consider what we call the radio sphere, this represents the distance of our radio transmissions have covered in the last century. Although the signals have degraded significantly, they have so far reached about 15,000 star systems. However, this figure is only a fraction compared to the number of stars in the Milky Way, and there is Velta Rouge. If you look at Velta Rouge in the night sky tonight, you are actually seeing the light that is left at surface 640 years ago, about 100 years before Columbus set sail for the New World. This light has traveled for all that time and is just now reaching our planet. It is truly amazing to realize that Velta Rouge on a universal scale is relatively close. To amaze you even more, 
we must consider that our radio sphere, which encompasses all human radio transmissions, is only a small dot within the immense expanse of the Milky Way. To help us imagine this, if we were to reduce our solar system to the size of a quarter of the United States, the entire Milky Way would be compared to the vastness of our planet. In this immense region, there would be about 300 billion star systems in their planets. We are just one of those 300 billion star systems floating in the midst of an unimaginably large number of stars and planets beyond our galaxy. At least a trillion more galaxies. Yes, a trillion. A trillion is an incredibly large number. To understand its magnitude, imagine a collection of 1,000 cats. Now, suppose that there are 1,000 groups of cats, each consisting of 1,000 cats. That would give us a total of 1 million cats. But to understand a trillion, we must remember that there is already a million represented in that number. So a trillion equals to a million times a million, which is a staggering number of cats encounters. Our nearest neighboring galaxy is the Andromeda Galaxy, located 2.5 million light years away. Andromeda is rapidly approaching us at a tremendous speed. As this galaxy approaches, our night sky will undergo significant changes. This galaxy contains about 1 trillion stars and when eventually collides with our own galaxy, the Milky Way which has 300 billion stars, the chances of individual stars from both galaxies colliding with each other are quite slim. This illustrates the vastness of space and the low probability of direct interactions between stars within a galaxy. Galactic collisions, although rare at the level of individual stars, may even facilitate life between stars and galaxies. Galaxies are not static systems, but are dynamic and constantly evolving. As we move away from our galaxy, we find our local group of galaxies, followed by the Virgo Cluster, which contains more than 1,500 galaxies. And Virgo, in turn, is part of a larger supercluster known as Laniakea, which contains approximately 100,000 galaxies. Each of these 100,000 galaxies has hundreds of billions of stars and planets of its own. And this is only a small part of the big picture. In the observable universe, there are another 10 million similar superclusters. As we zoom out and observe, we discover an increasing number of mapped galaxies, that is, determined galaxies. However, these mapped galaxies represent only a small fraction of what is actually out there. There are a staggering number of hundreds of billions of galaxies that are not yet been fully mapped. In addition, we must consider the cosmic background radiation, which represents the oldest detectable light, that is, the residual heat left over from the Big Bang. This radiation is a remnant of the early stages of the existence of the universe. The scale of the universe becomes even more staggering when we consider the vastness beyond the galaxies. We find regions in space known as cosmic voids, where matter is scarce compared to the rest of the universe. These cosmic voids are immense, spanning hundreds of millions of light years in diameter, and appear as a vast expanses of seemingly empty space. However, these cosmic voids have the potential to give rise to the formation of future structures and galaxies. As we move deeper into the cosmos, we encounter cosmic filaments, which are colossal threats composed of dust, gas, and dark matter that stretch across billions of light years connecting galaxies and galaxy clusters. These cosmic filaments form a cosmic web-like structure that binds the universe together in the gravitational interaction. The distribution of matter in the universe is not uniform, but shows a cosmic web pattern, where clusters and superclusters of galaxies are connected by this cosmic filament. This creates an intricate tapestry that spans unimaginable distances. It is within these cosmic filaments and superclusters that galaxies congregate, interacting through gravity. The vastness of space offers a vast and abundant stage for the existence of countless celestial objects and phenomena, for example, supernovae, which are the explosive death of massive stars, disperse heavy elements throughout the cosmos and reach in the interstellar medium and planetary systems. Black holes with their immense gravity play a determining role in the evolutions of galaxies and can release jets of energy that extend great distances into space. In the depths of space, we also find exotic phenomena such as quasars, which are supermassive black holes that feed on intermittent matter and emit colossal amounts of energy. These quasars can eclipse entire galaxies and act as beacons of the early universe, allowing us to study the cosmos in its early stages. The question arises, however, what lies beyond the observable universe? There are numerous additional galaxies that are beyond our visual reach, as the life from these galaxies has not had enough time to reach Earth. 
In addition, due to the continuous expansions of space and the constant motion of galaxies, the light from most of these distant galaxies will never reach us. As a result, these regions may remain inaccessible to us indefinitely. As the universe extends, we can make inferences based on our understanding of the laws of physics. These inferences suggest that the entire universe is at least 250 times larger than the observable universe. In fact, there are compelling arguments suggesting that its size could be even larger, potentially infinite. In this context, a broader perspective emerges that leads us to consider the nature of the universe and our place in it. As human beings on a remote planet within the vast expanse of space, contemplating these possibilities invites us to reflect on our existence and our role in the cosmos. So, have you ever wondered how vast our universe is? Well, if so, I hope this video has helped you to understand even a little more the immensity of the cosmos. I hope you use the comment box to expose any questions and if you liked the video, hit the like button, share it to reach more people and subscribe to not miss more content like this. Thank you so much for watching the video and see you in the next one.